Look at a flower. Have you ever looked at a flower? Or you have looked at it, given it a name, and passed it by. Or you say, how beautiful it may smell it. All these are destructive actions which prevent you from looking at that flower. Look at that oak tree. Actually look at it. You are the observer and the oak is the observed. There is a space between you and the thing which is the tree. In that interval of space is time. The time that has to be covered to see that object. In that interval of space, there are all kinds of ideas which actually prevent me from seeing the fact of the truth. When you no longer name, no longer fu thought functioning, as knowledge about that tree, then is there a space between you and the tree? Then, if you go into it very deeply and observe all this, then the observer is the observer, which is not the observer identifies himself with the tree. Observer is the image. Uh, which has been created. He's the censor, uh, the, the entity that judges, compares, uh, all that. Now, and then he looks at the object, uh, either the tree or his own experience, or his image, his relationship with somebody, another. So the. Observer is the image, looking at the, at the image which he has created about the other. So the relationship between the observer and the observed is not a relationship. It's two images looking at each other. Huh? Now, if the observer has, when the observer has no image at all, either, which is quite a tremendous, uh, problem, inquiry, which is meditation, all that, then the, the observer is the observed. What is, is the observer. Not the observer is looking at what is. And when the observer is the observed, and the observer has always as though the observed is something different from himself, then he could act. But when he realizes that the observer is the observed, all action ceases on his part. And therefore all effort. And therefore there is no fear at all. This requires a great deal of inward inquiry, inward observation, step by step without coming to any conclusion. Why do you choose? What is the, what is the necessity of choice? If you see something very clearly, as we just now saw, what freedom implied, and when, it's so, when the mind is only free that it can see the total, Total. Mm -hmm. When you see that clearly, there's no choice. It's only the confused mind that chooses. Awareness takes place only when there is no choice, or when you are aware of all the conflicting choices, conflicting desires, the strains, just to observe all this movement of contradiction. And 
knowing that the observer is the observed. And therefore, in that process there is no choice at all, but only watching what is. And that's entirely different from concentration. And that, that awareness brings a quality of attention. in which there is neither the observer nor the observed. When you really attend, completely attend, like when you are now, if you are really listening, there is neither the listener nor the speaker. And that state of attention brings about an extraordinary freshness, youth, and not youth, in, in America they use that word terribly. The extraordinary sense of freshness, quality of uh, newness to the mind. And this emptying of the mind with all the experiences it has had is the is meditation. 